Hey everyone, um, happy Monday. It's on the hour for me, so I'll get started. Uh, thanks for joining the UX update. You can find a link to the slides uh, in the calendar invite. And I'll just get right into what we've been up to and there'll be plenty of time for questions at the end. So first you may have seen that our research panel is live. You can share this link with everyone you know. Sarah did a lot of great work on it and the more signups we have, the easier it is for us to do more and better user testing. Um, also, Sarah's gonna start doing UX research group updates. So this will give more insight into what she's been working on and what we've been learning from our research. We've been doing a lot of stuff with navigation and other uh, features. So our first one will be April 6th, so please join that as well. Next, I'm gonna go through some of the issues UX has been working on for 9.1. The first is multiple assignees, and this is something that a lot of people have been asking for, including ourselves. It has 97 thumbs up emojis, and it's really exciting that it's going into 9.1 because we'll be able to assign the same issue to multiple people. So front end, UX, back end can all be on the same issue. And this won't include merge requests yet for this um, iteration, but it, this is also something that the community is often asking for, so you can probably see it in a future release. Uh, burn down charge is also going into 9.1, and this is also highly requested with 57 thumbs up emojis. Uh, along with burn down charts, Pedro did an entire revamp of the milestone page, so that'll also be included um, in this release, and it's just a lot cleaner and easier to digest. You'll also now be able to switch between comments and resolvable discussions on merge requests and issues. So Dali has been working on that a lot. Um, in this scope, you won't be able to change an existing comment to a resolvable discussion, but this, we have an issue for this to add for, the, for another um, iteration. Uh, but right now it'll allow the user to choose whether their existing comment should, or whether their comment should be resolvable or not and to create threads. Uh, we're also working on improving existing flows. So one of the flows that we've been working on in this release was for configuring uh, approval for merge requests. Some people weren't even aware that we had this feature until we turned it on for ourselves. So we've made some changes to the placement and the UI to make it easier to discover and to just update in general. Hazel did some great work on that. And the Prometheus team has been doing a lot of work. Um, we're planning to allow adding new metrics to monitor 9.1. You'll be able to search for metrics that we discover are available for you. And you'll also be able to just enter your own. Um, and this is just all done through the services section in the settings. There's also a lot more search improvements that Chris and the search team have been working on. We're bringing the new search UI to issue boards, so you can see that on the left um, side. And uh, we're, um, you'll also be able to select recent searches through the drop down, and you can see that on the right. Um, and we're also removing repeated labels that are entered into the search bar to clean it up, and you'll be able to search for issues that have multiple assignees, so it'll work with the new feature as well. I can see the chat, so I'm just reading it as I go. <laughs> uh, lastly that I have on here is we added subgroups in 9.1 and some of the UI improvements didn't make it in, so we're adding those, um, or in 9.0, and we're adding those in 9.1. So currently the groups dashboard just shows a giant list of all your groups and the subgroups, but with this release, we'll show them nested, so it's just easier to see the hierarchy of each group that, that is within a group. Um, so next I'm going to go through just a couple issues that the UX team has been working on that aren't currently scheduled. We oftentimes have some time to kind of work on things that aren't in the current release, so I just included some of those. One of them is improving mass editing of issues. Um, with the change we made to the search, there's been some confusion when mass editing because the filters look just like our old filters used to look. 
Um, so Chris has been working on an update to this UI so it's a little more clear and the user doesn't start kind of mass editing issues when they think that they're searching. And this will just help relieve some of those accidents. And the issue is tagged with coming soon, so it's likely to be in an upcoming release. Uh, Yo, were any upcoming changes plans driven by UX research outcomes? Yeah, so we have, um, like for the example, this mass editing issues, we saw this as a problem in one of our user testing. And so we have, so I, uh, sorry, Chris has been making it a priority and it will be tagged as, up, as coming soon. So yeah, we definitely use that. Um, so there's been a lot of talk and issues surrounding relationships between issues, linking issues, kind of meta issues and child issues, et cetera. And Dimitri started some work on how a relationship between issues might work. Yeah, it is still a work in progress. And again, it's not scheduled, but it's something that the community has really been asking for, and I think it could improve our flows. Dimitri and Chris have also been working closely with Mark to look at creating this kind of consolidated view of pipelines across projects. And this is just one screenshot showing kind of what they've been doing, but I just encourage, I linked the issue, so I would encourage you guys just to check them out to see more of their awesome designs. And then Pedro's been doing some great work on trying to make our colors more harmonious. Um, so you can see on the left, he took our brand colors and then created this color wheel that's in the middle. Um, and then from those, we've had a number of variations that are in the issue that are fun to look at and we're really close to drilling it down. So hopefully this will be maybe a 9.1 or 9.2. And lastly, section I have is just um, for some UX improvements that are ready for implementation, we have around 70 issues that are tagged with the UX ready label. And there's also a number of issues that are tagged with UI polish that are kind of smaller UI fixes. And you can check those out if you're looking for just a quick contribution. But I've pulled just a few of the UX ready issues to share. The first one, this was shared in the last um, UX update but I've included it here again because it has uh, 56 thumbs up emojis customizing your branch name when you're creating a branch uh, via the issues section. It's highly asked for and it's also marked with coming soon. So hopefully it'll be added because there's a lot of discussion about it. Uh, we've uh, had this UX finished for a little while. It shows existing issues when you're typing the title of an issue on creation. Uh, this would help cut down a lot on duplicates and it also will help users find related issues that they're looking for. The idea is that it would kind of look similar to how Stack Overflow works. And Hazel's been doing a lot of work on improving our confirmation dialogues. Right now we're using system messages and this doesn't really allow us to customize the experience at all. Uh, using our own modals would allow us to kind of change the button copy, the colors, have a header, et cetera, which makes the action the user is about to perform more clear. So there's a list in the issue that shows all of the current ones we have and the improved copy that we're suggesting. Chris has also been doing some awesome work on just improving the design of issue board cards. Uh, you can really see the difference here and they just look a lot more polished between the version that we currently have on the left and then his new version on the right. And I think this would just really help clean up the entire page. And lastly, I just included a few other issues that um, we've worked on in order to improve consistency throughout the site. For example, we have a number of different search boxes and we want to reduce that and use the same one throughout the website. We also have mixed icons in certain places. One example of that is just the arrow icon we use for drop downs. Another example is the icon we use for merge requests. So it would just be nice to really um, clean that up and make sure that we're using the same icon in the same place if they have the same meaning. We're also working on adding a key to our UX guide that shows each icon and kind of what their, what their meanings are and when they should be um, applied. So that should help with this in the future. And the last one I have here 
Number three is just the loading buttons. Right now we have multiple versions of this as well. So a lot of um, these seem like simple, small issues, but they really help to just build a cohesive experience. So we'd really like to work on bringing these things together. And so those are just some of the things we've been working on. I will stop sharing my screen so I can answer any questions. And I go back through the chat to make sure I didn't miss any. What am I most excited about? I'm most excited about where Sarah's been taking research right now. I think that with the research panel, we're going to be more, we're just going to have so much more freedom to figure out what, um, you know, what we should be working on, what our problems are, how we can fix them. So I think the more people we have signed up for that, the more we're going to be able to do. So make sure you share that link, everyone. How many people have signed up for it so far? Sarah, can you put post in the chat how many people have signed up? 85. Are we missing all? So, Sid, are we listing all existing research videos from a fixed location? So, we've Sarah's been working on a new project that will have all the meta issues for them and all of the um, videos will be there. And we have an open merge request right now that is going to help improve the process that she has. So, feel free to contribute to that as well if you have ideas. Can we, uh, can we maybe link that meta issue to, um, to the research panel page or something like that? Yeah, I'll talk to Sarah about a way, because the research panel, maybe we can link some, but I would worry that it would get overwhelmed because that page is primarily for getting people to sign up. So maybe if some people see some videos, they might be more willing to sign up, but I wouldn't want to overwhelm that page with a bunch of uh, older tests, but we can do something similar, I'm sure. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I just, I recently I, I saw some of the videos and was like, wow, this is amazing content. I'm not sure that all of our developers and the rest of the wider community has had all the videos available. Yeah, and I think that hopefully with the new UX research um, functional group update, that'll help as well. So we're just trying to make, you know, people more aware of the research we've been doing through multiple avenues. Great. We should tweet more about the research panel. Yeah, we've tweeted it once, but yeah, keep tweeting it. Cool, so I'll give a couple more seconds to see if there's any more questions. So the research panel be linked from the release post? Yes, I will add that today. Thanks, Victor, that's a great point. Great, I'll add it at the beginning right there. Couple more seconds if there's any other questions. Great, I will give you guys 15 minutes back of your Monday. Have a great rest of the day, everyone. Oh wait, will research findings be posted? Yeah, so that's what we were just uh, discussing a little bit. They, Sarah will have a functional group update. They're gonna be posted in a new research project um, on GitLab, and then we'll keep looking at making those more apparent to everyone. Cool. Have a great day, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your Monday.